So how did each of you approach uh, covering this? Covering it, the intersection of race and ethnicity and gender and politics? Because, you know, the old, obviously, I don't think anybody here subscribes to the old idea that we're all objective reporters who walk out with a report card and sort of leave our consciences and, and experiences behind. But obviously this is an issue, these issues, you know, are uniquely personal. We don't walk into a room without, you know, having that. So how, how do you, how do you balance sort of the need to be a, a reporter and an, and an analyst with being someone who has lived one way or another, lived this experience to that to that point in your life? I mean, choosing to be a journalist is unique to. I mean, I mean, it's it's a it's it's a perfect. It's the inevitable direction to, to go if you're if you're socially conscious and if you yeah. are um, in, into social justice. And I mean, I am a journalist because I am. Um, an advocate for social and racial justice, and I am a, you know, and I serve my community as a journalist um, in, in that, that way. But I think there's also, um, I want to address the question itself, because um, I got asked this question a lot when I founded the Race Beat at the Times. Um, I think when you see, not all journalists start out as journalists, right? You've got journalists who have worked in the financial field, who then become business journalists. You have people who are doctors, who then become health journalists. And when we would look at those examples, we say, wow, that person is such an expert in what they do that it just makes sense for them to be a journalist. But we don't ask them, wow, you worked in Wall Street. Can you be objective covering <laughs> CEOs of these companies? Or you were a doctor. Can you really be objective mm -hmm. dealing with other doctors? But when it comes to race and gender, there's almost like this assumed um, agenda that journalists of color or women ha or you know whoever is covering a sort of social justice beat has to have and I think that that's we have to start there and looking at analyzing why we're asking that question and making those assumptions what I will say is having done this for a couple of years now I think the challenges are often inside the newsroom itself um, there is a severe lack of diversity in newsrooms particularly in mainstream media I've talked about this for for quite some time now and really where I think it gets interesting is when you're seeing the editing process for a lot of your stories. The pitch process has gotten easier, right? The pitch process is not as hard as it was years ago because now having, everyone's talking about race. We're having so everybody wants yeah. to have, the, yeah. everybody's got a race beat. Everybody, you know, when they killed the race beat where at my former employer was like, what's going on? But now everybody's got a race yeah. beat, right? So it's not that hard to say, hey, I've got a story about black, brown, women, this, that, whatever. It, the pitching has gotten easier. Where it's trickier is at the editing process. When you're saying, Someone doesn't feel comfortable with something or understand something. The majority of the editors that we deal with, I'm sure all of us, are white. And so there's a, an, 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 a, a sort of gut reaction to say, let's just take that out. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the answer is no, let's understand it. So you, the editor, understand it so it can stay in because that's necessary for context. So that the, the battles are changing, but they're still necessary. The editing process and also the awareness process, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, it, it's, it goes beyond, I mean, it's such an interesting thing, you know, the idea of objectivity around race and the agenda, the implied agenda and so on and so forth, you know, and, and that journalists are, are, are meant to be, if objective or if not objective, you know, at least well read and, and culturally savvy, right? But how many white editors have you had who, you know, have said, well, who's Daniel Holtzclaw? You know, mm -hmm. uh, how do you not how do you not know who that is? Um, because it doesn't matter really what happens to Who's black Ava women. Who's Ava DuVernay? You, you, it, mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> and so that, it, and it's, it's absolutely. What's black Twitter? I can go on. <laughs> oh or God. or yeah. I've heard of black Twitter. Can you please explain it to yeah. me? Mm -hmm. How yeah. do you log into black Twitter? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. And so that then becomes. But is that you, don't you want them to ask if they don't know? Um, well, I mean, like, I, mean, I, I enjoy the curiosity, but I think that, I mean, <laughs> that you know, because so it's nice. like, oh, it's I enjoy a, the curiosity. It's a great question. But, at, but so, so what I don't like, though, is um, when editors, journalists who are otherwise curious people, um, do not do their due diligence to sort of find these things out themselves. Because right? that's what so, we do, right? We're, that's why. Absolutely. Like I'm of reading curiosity. everything all the time. I'm I'm all over Twitter. I'm tapping into conversations. Uh, I don't appreciate having to be the the um, the guide. The guide. It, absolutely. Right. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, um, and if I'm going to be the guy, trust what exactly. I'm telling you. Exactly. I was just going to say. Yeah, if absolutely. I'm looking to me to guide you, and right. I'm telling you. That is my expertise. 
trust that I'm yeah. not going to lead you wrong because not, none of yeah. my work has shown anything right, wrong so right. far. So not to mention, me. pay me what you owe me. Well, that, yeah. that's a whole. Oh my yeah. God, we're going <laughs> to we're going to go there. Yeah. So, so let me ask. You, but if if we have a problem, and I understand your point that you know the the, the assumption that someone who is not white on the white on the race beat or the ethnicity beat would come with uh, an agenda. Um, let's turn that around and say, how do we feel about a white person on that beat? I mean, obviously they have their own agenda and background too. Uh, is that something one would be comfortable with? I think we've had white people on that beat. Maybe it hasn't been called that beat for, for centuries. For sure. for, but, but if we called yeah. it that, but if we yeah. called it that. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, take real I think, issue yeah. with that. Um, uh, I think that it goes along the lines of if, you, if I'm going to be that person, then you need to let me be that person mm -hmm. and let me be the expert. And there's some standing down that has to go on and there's some deference that has to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is like the ultimate, you know, kind of outing of white privilege, which is that there is this choice to either defer or not defer. And more often than not, yeah. the deference doesn't happen because mm -hmm. the they choose to, to, to not, you know, so it's- Because so what the deference does is it says that, that being a person of color, being a woman, being a queer person, is um, important and valuable and add something, right? That 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 person may not have because they are white, male, straight, cis, and that's a really hard thing to accept. There's just this assumption that white reporters can handle all types of topics, and they're expected to do so seamlessly and easily. And I'd like to see the same thing, the same privileges granted to reporters of color. Well, I'll drink to that. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yay.